Libra Rising, February 2024. This month, you're focused on love, romance, creativity, and you're appreciating some unexpected financial blessings. And the journey begins on the 5th when Mercury makes a conjunction to Pluto in your 5th house of creativity and romance. This could manifest a couple of ways. You are feeling something intensely and it needs to be communicated, but you're doing this with a person that you trust or you want to establish trust with or it's going into some project, some creative endeavor. It's not destabilizing, but people might be surprised by what it is that you have to say because we typically don't showcase or forecast our darkness, specifically for Libra rising. On the ninth, there's a new moon in Aquarius. This is a new beginning romantically or creatively. You are wanting to start a new project or go on a date with someone who is interesting. On the 13th to the 17th, Venus and Mars make a conjunction to Pluto in Aquarius. If this is talking about romances, the person is enjoying you just as much as you're enjoying them. And now we have all these fun activities to do together. Are we going to a museum? Are we going to a comedy show, a basketball game? Dates, dates with playmates, but at the same time, very bonding because Pluto is involved. If it's not that, you have started this new creative endeavor and you have these action items that you need to complete in order to share this project with the world. On the 19th, Sun enters Pisces, which is your sixth house of health, wellness, ants, uncles, and pets. You could find that your day-to-day -day life is a little bit more busy and you're focused on your physical body. So exercising, eating right, practicing mindfulness, and just overall like smooth relationships on a day-to-day -day basis. On the 19th, Chiron is conjunct the North Node in Aries in your seventh house. These two days are very tenderizing, probably for your partner. Your partner might need a little bit more affirmation or they will be put in a stressful situation that brings them into a fear-based mentality or throws them into survival mode. So if they are acting a little larger than life, maybe they're throwing more tantrums than usual, give them a little grace and then also give them the perspective that they might be viewing the situation through the lens of their inner child who is terrified of being abandoned and left behind. This could also be a business partner if it's not a romantic partner, or it could be a best friend. On the 20th to the 23rd, Venus is conjunct Mars and Aquarius still, so we're still creating a lot or dating a lot. On the 24th to the 28th, Venus, Mars, and Aquarius makes a square aspect to Jupiter and Taurus in your eighth house. So are we getting money for what it is that we are creating? Are we needing investments or investors? Are we trying to tie up what we do for fun into the ways in which we make money, like trying to secure the bag long term? If it's not that, then you could be talking finances with the person that you're dating and seeing how everything is going. At the end of the day, it does seem like a blessing uh, tying up creativity and finances. On the 24th, there's a full moon in Virgo in your 12th house. This is a nitpicky moon that wants to cut through all the bullshit and set things straight in your house of mental health. So if you have been partaking in any martyrdom kind of behaviors, self-depreciating inner dialogue, there's going to be a shift in the script where you set those bad habits down and you embrace new, fresh, lighter approach to your own psychology. On um, the 27th to the 29th, there's a Sun and Mercury Kazemi in Pisces in your sixth house. Illumination and focus and mental attention on your overall health and wellness. So needing to pay attention to the details, needing to speak. Maybe you're being asked to speak more at work than usual. Maybe you're just communicating more. Uh, but it's, it's an illuminating time where you're sure to learn something about a situation that gives you agency and perspective. On the 29th, Saturn, Kazemi, and Pisces, we're getting rid of all of the emotional, spiritual info that we are downloading as it relates to our physical health, fitness, diet, and routine. And we're looking at what needs to be done. So this does give me a feeling of sobriety, cutting out bad toxic habits and coping mechanisms. And that is the end. I did pull some tarot cards for you. You have the Ten of Swords, the Magician, the Four of Cups, and the King of Wands. With the Ten of Swords, we are looking at some built-up resentment. So you could feel as if the present moment is reflective of the past or the past is repeating itself. Do make an effort to write down all of the betrayals that you've experienced, the ways that you have been let down with the effort or intention of releasing them for good. 
you are being given the exact resources that you need right now to create a life that is stimulating and exciting, but what you choose to do with those materials and maybe even your ability to recognize that they're there lies in your own hands. Four of Cups and the King of Wands. We're, we're moving past this point of feeling bored as if the universe doesn't have our back and not a lot of new things are coming towards us. With the King of Wands, we could be a little bit resentful. Again, so you do have two cards that talk about being angry or frustrated with how things have been. It could be frustration with yourself as it relates to being able to reconcile interpersonal issues. But in any case, I want you to use the fire that you feel, the red emotions. How funny is it that I'm using red right now in the color? Use the red emotions that you feel to determine what lives and what dies, what stays and what goes. Toodles.